Hi guys, and welcome back to another Madden 19 rebuild. This time, we'll be going over the Cincinnati Bengals. And this team could go one of two ways, I think. They've got a few reasonably, you know, young core players on the team, like Joe Mixon. Um, but overall, not sure what we're going to do with Andy Dalton. Um, he could be okay. He's sort of, a, he's in an interesting spot. He's 84 overall there. He's playing quite well this season, so I think he's got an overall upgrade um, since the game came out. But as you can see, there's a fair few people on the team who we might keep, we might not keep. They do have some very good players, but they are ageing, such as AJ Green and Carlos Dunlap. John Ross here could be someone who can get up in the overalls. He's obviously very fast running. I think he did run the fastest 40 in Combine history, just by a hundredth of a second or something. Also got Billy Price here, who they drafted in the first round last year, who could turn out once again to be a good player. But overall, their offensive line definitely needs work, and that's probably an area that we're going to upgrade quite early on um, in the rebuilding process here. Tyler Eifert is actually one of my favourite tight ends in the game, and in real life, to be honest. I absolutely love Tyler Eifert. If it wasn't for injuries, I think he'd be doing a hell of a lot better as a player. Got uh, Geno Atkins there. Same problem with him and AJ Green and Carlos Dunlap. Um, they're all reasonably old, but their overalls are fairly good. Might keep them for a year and then trade them after the year. Going to see how we go along. As you can see, Carlos Dunlap's actually a very good player. Um, if we do keep him, he should get a fair amount of sacks. We've got um, William Jackson here, who actually, I think last year, was one of, if not the highest rated corner when, like, when quarterbacks passed towards him, they had the lowest passer rating. I think it was him. So he's a little bit actually underrated in the game here. With the cornerback situation, besides him, though, I don't think we have much going for us. So I think we might have to get another cornerback in. Um, got Drake Kirkpatrick, who is okay. But yeah, as I said, there's, this could go one of two ways. There's a lot of ifs, ands, or buts with this Bengals team. We'll get into some trades, hopefully. We can make the team a little bit better. 78 overall isn't going to be getting us to the playoffs. So we'll see what sort of trades we can get in. And if we'll trade the aging players. So first trade here. Not sure why the Cardinals have interest in these two 71 overall guys. But we're going to trade both of them for their first round pick. Maybe use that in a trade. Or maybe use that to draft someone and go for the three years. So for the next pick here. The Lions obviously need linebackers. We're going to trade off two linebackers who we're not going to use, Evans, Jefferson, and also Russell, for their first round draft pick. Going to go for Adrian Amos here. We didn't have an amazing strong safety, and getting rid of these, these two guys and a third round for Amos, who will probably get into the mid-90s, is a very good trade in my opinion. Next trade here. There's not a lot of players on the team who we can actually trade for good value. So we're going to trade Nick Vigil, Harris and a free safety for the Dolphins first rounder. And with the final pick, or sorry, the final, might be the final trade, might go with another one. We're going to get Miles Garrett in, probably one of my favourite D linemen to get. He goes up to 99 overall so often and we'll get a fairly reasonable deal for him. And with the final one, Vita Vea, I was looking to get in some other players, but I'll go with him just for these three guys who we're never going to use. And I think that might be the end of the trading. Um, the team's looking a little bit better overall, I think. It's still a 78 overall, but we'll, we'll modify a few things around, change a few positions. We might go up one or two, but the team's a lot younger. We'll keep Geno Atkins at least for this year, Vontis perfect at least for this year, and see where we end up. So at the mid-season mark, or coming up to the mid-season mark, oh no, this is actually the mid-season mark, uh, our record is 3-5. and five. Um, This is a very hard division, so I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do when it comes to to, to get into the playoffs, because obviously the Steelers are a very good team, the Browns develop very well, and the Ravens are a fairly decent team. They tend to sort of peter off a little bit as... Because they have a very, very ageing roster. But anyway, with re-signings, we're going to get Adrian Amos. I mean, we just traded for him, so we'll definitely bring him back. Very good, strong safety. I think he might go up to a 90 overall by the end of the year. Tyler Eifert as well, 27 years old. So if he's in, in the prime for a three to four year rebuild, he might go down one or two overalls, but he'll also go up one or two overalls before that. So he should end up around a 90, 89 overall, which is definitely worth keeping at the tight end position. One of the best in the league overall-wise on the game. 
Um, Denard, we're going to keep, just because he's fairly young, you know, he'll be a good number three corner. He doesn't want too much money either, so he'll definitely be good in that position. And Preston Brown, he's a linebacker who I'm not sure whether we should keep in. He's 25, he's doing decently this year, he's got the right scheme fit, so he could go up one or two overalls, maybe get quick development. And we might see if we can get him back towards the end of the year, because um, he didn't accept that offer. But... I mean, we'll get Tyler Croft just because he'll be massively cheap. I'm not sure exactly how much fallbacks affect it, but, you know, we'll, we'll keep him in for now. And I don't think anyone else there. Jake Fisher was a maybe until I saw that. He wants eight million over three years. That is way too much. Um, Vincent Ray, just we don't have another linebacker. I mean, we will be able to get someone better than him, but he's just, he's a team captain. Uh, he doesn't want hardly any money, so we'll keep him for now. And I think we'll see what kind of upgrades we have. Um, a few players, I think Jesse Bates tends to go up. Yeah, Jesse Bates has got two. He tends to go up a fair few overalls. Most most um, rebuilds I see him in, he ends up around the 90s. So we've got a lot of players with potential here. Just going to have to fill in the spots that we don't have players with potential. So Andy Dalton, you know, we'll see how he does towards the end of this year. We might draft a quarterback, um, depending on, you know, how, how the situation unfolds. He is just average, I think. And you need someone better than average to get you through the playoffs unless you get uh, the rest of the team really, really performing. So 6-10. and ten. I can't see Andy Dalton staying on after that, depending on how his stats did. I can't imagine defence was the weakness. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll go into the stats now just to check as to whether it's worth keeping him. And I don't think it is. He was sort of below average, only 3,700 yards there. Um, 26 touchdowns to 9 interceptions isn't too bad, but we should be seeing him at least in the 30s for the touchdowns when we have AJ Green, John Ross, Joe Mixon. We have we have good offensive skill position players, especially Tyler Eifert as well, actually. So AJ Green, good season there. Tyler Boyd, I think he might be sort of a dark horse in this one. A number two receiver tends to not get that many yards, so we'll definitely take that. Um, Overall, not a fantastic performance from the offense. It's decent, but it's not great. I don't know why Jake Fisher played. Um, but I mean, I don't think it mattered too much because our offensive line was absolutely awful overalls everywhere. That might be someone we do look to upgrade. Um, Preston Brown with a fairly good season. 134 tackles with four sacks. A lot of tackles for loss. Not many sacks, but we seem to be defending the run very, very well as a team. See, Vita Vea leading the sacks there with Vontes Perfect coming in second. Uh, that's a bit unexpected, considering I think we were running a 4-3. But anyway, let's... Uh, I suppose we'll move into free agency now. We'll just skip forward to free agency. Nothing too important. I don't think there's going to be any safeties blocked. I mean, there wasn't one block kicked or any defensive touchdowns. Um, actually, we'll move into the yearly awards before we move into the off-season. Not sure if we'll be able to sign many people. Um... Just simply due to the fact that the Dolphins and the Redskins will be offering boatloads of money to pretty much everyone we would think about signing. I don't expect us to have anyone on any of these lists either. We'll just have a quick look through. Baker Mayfield doing very, very well. So I think when we move on to the Browns rebuild, he'll be someone we can definitely uh, build the team around. But Oh, there is a Bengal. There's a Preston, Preston Brown there in the linebacker spot. Was that offensive rookie of the year he was in? No, it was defensive, defensive player of the year, sorry. I know he wasn't a rookie, don't know why I said that. But anyway, um, Vita Vea there coming in. I was pretty surprised we were able to trade for him so easily. He's got star development as well, so potentially over the, the next few years, him, he can replace Geno Atkins, we can draft a D-tackle or something maybe and have one of the best D-lines in the league with Miles Garrett and Vita Vea in there. But this is the team, doesn't look fantastic, it's 80 overall, we'll have to have a good draft and a good free agency so let's jump into that now so just as i thought there weren't any huge names in free agency we put in a few low ball offers we got adam humphreys there just maybe we can use him for trade bait we just got shay ray there just we needed an outside linebacker and unfortunately got final contract rejection there but we'll move into the draft to see if we can pick anyone up so We've got the third overall pick, I think it is. Yeah, we've got the third overall pick. We're just going to trade down, just because, once again, unfortunately, this, is, this isn't a very good draft for positions we need. Um, we'll see, sort of, at pick seven, if there's anyone. We've got a lot of first-round picks, so we'll see if there's anyone here. There wasn't anyone, sort of, top five who I thought would be any good. Um, the linemen who I want are still here. 
Uh, Tyron Perkins does look very good, but so does Cullen Blanton. Um, I think we're going to go right tackle. Uh, yeah, just because he had a better combine. Quick development. He's a power player. We're probably going to change scheme anyway, just because I don't think the other scheme we were using we can use to the full potential. But Tyron Perkins looks fairly good. And we've got two other first round draft picks, I think. Uh, not a sexy pick, not a flashy pick, but I mean, we need to build up the line to be able to make a difference for this team. Um, just because that's the main area of weakness. Uh, might trade this pick down, depending. There weren't any good enough offers there, I don't think. So we'll probably go for the left tackle if he's still available. See if he's still on the board. And he's not. Um, no one here quite looks first round quality. Um, Fisher Holmes is very fast though and the Bengals do have a tendency of drafting very fast wide receivers in the first round so with the John Ross experiment turning out to be a failure I think I don't think he went up any overalls this year I don't think he's fantastic um, I think we'll probably go for the fastest wide receiver in the class in Fisher Holmes him AJ Green and Tyler Boyd will be a very very good top three um, receivers for the team potentially one of the best in the league especially with the star development of Fisher Holmes there he'll be fantastic going over the middle maybe him in the slot maybe him out wide with Tyler Boyd in the slot either way that is a good pick and we'll see who else we get so moving on to the second round just another lineman in Jason McLeod looks fairly decent for a second round pick and this is the draft overall it's an okay draft um, we did draft a kicker and a punter at the end just because there was literally nothing else on the board and getting a kicker and a punter decent ones will make a little bit of difference obviously you can usually sign them in free agency just on cheap deals but I mean if we draft them in the fifth and the sixth we can get on very cheap deals for quite a long time on rookie contracts so it's definitely a benefit to the team and this is how the team is looking going into the second year looks decent the o-line a few slight improvements have bumped our overall up too. defense is looking very good so i think it's going to be one of those rebuilds where we rely on the defense to carry the offense um Vontes perfect star development i did not realize that he's aging a little bit so we might look to replace him but you know we'll move into the second year and we'll see where we go from there moving into year two um, like I said in the first year with cornerbacks, this does look like a bit of an overtrade, but Tredavis White is fantastic in this game. I think he has quick or star development. He should get up to a 99 and him and William Jackson will be an unbelievable cornerback duo. And with Adam Humphreys, I said he was probably going to be trade bait. Him and John Ross, we're going to trade for Shaq Mason, one of the easiest to trade for O-linemen in the game. And he's also 89 overall, so getting him in at... One of the guard positions, um, we'll probably move him over to left guard, I think, just because we've got our rookie at right guard. He might develop a little bit better than the two guys we currently have, who are both 29 or 30, I think. So we we'll, might look to trade those guys on, maybe keep them this year and trade them on next year. We'll see. But I'm liking the team now. 83 overall, very good defense and fairly good offense. I think we might do one final trade, actually. Um we got Moten there from the Panthers. We need to get rid of Glenn and Bowling. I thought we could go for Zadarius Smith there, maybe sneak him in, but Moten there for these two guys. I mean, he's going to replace the left tackle and the left guard wasn't getting any game time anyway. And they were both aging. Moten's quite young at 24 or 25, so he could go up a few overalls. We'll move him over to left tackle. Um, he looks like a fairly decent player, to be honest. I don't think he's someone I've ever traded for. So he'll be just a nice... A nice tackle to put in there, someone who can develop slowly. We could hopefully get him up to around the mid-80s, uh, bump the offensive line up just that little bit more, but I'm much happier with where it stands now. I think we've built a fairly nice team here. We've changed pretty much all the offensive linemen. D-line is looking very nice. Um, I can't really see a real weakness on this team. Cornerbacks are looking great. Um, D-line's looking good. The linebackers could use a little bit of improvement, but at the end of this year, that can be something we can address. Let's, so let's jump into sort of the mid-season, see where we are. Hopefully, we'll be on course to make it to the playoffs. So, to the mid-season. Uh, we're not actually looking that much better this year. We're 3-4. and four. Unfortunately, well, AJ Green is a re-sign. And we're third in the division again, but it is a hard division. We could, we could push on and make it to the playoffs with this record. I mean... 
We're only behind the Steelers by two games, which is a fair amount, but I mean, you know, we'll see. We'll see where we end up. We did actually end up replacing Andy Dalton with Charlie Meadows. Um, I don't know if, if I included that one. He was a fairly decent draft pick, but I just don't think Andy Dalton is the answer. For re-signings, we have AJ Green. Um, he does want quite a big deal for 31 years old, but I mean, he'll probably go down to an 88 overall next year and then an 85 the year after. So we'll sign him for a bit and then maybe trade him towards the end. Or he'll be a decent number three when it comes to the end. He does want big money. But I mean, we have a little bit of cap space at the moment so we can give it to him. William Jackson, definitely someone I'm going to keep. He is a phenomenal corner. Only normal development, but for a number two, 85 overall. He doesn't want tons of money. Um, we'll definitely give that to him. Over five, 30 over five, very good. We can afford that, especially with the O-line we've got, who are nice and cheap. Tyler Boyd, quick development, very good slot man. He's, he seems to be doing very well as a compliment to AJ Green and Fisher Holmes. Um, we'll definitely give him, once again, not too expensive. I mean, if we were doing this in sort of the long 10-year type type rebuild, I probably wouldn't give him that bigger contract, but since it's for three or four years, that's fine. Gio Bernard, not sure on this one. We have Joe Mixon, who's up to around an 85 overall, so at best he's a backup, and I don't want to pay a lot for a backup, so we'll really, really lowball him. If he takes it, we'll give it to him. If not, we'll let him go, and we'll sign a backup in the offseason. Andrew Billings, I think he is one of the starting defensive tackles now, if I remember right. We'll give him quite a long deal, not too much hit on the cap, cap side of things. Hopefully he takes that, and you know we'll jump to the, the end of the season and see where we are. So jump in to the end of the season. We did make the playoffs, made the wild card at 9-7. and seven. I can't imagine um, we won the division. No, we didn't. We just got ahead of the Browns, but the Steelers are still 12-4. and four. Winning the division is going to be very, very tough with that Steelers team because they have, they have a lot of very good high overall players. I mean, they have Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, two of the highest skill position overall players there. But for our team, Charlie Meadows... Very good. Andy Dalton threw the ball three times that season, actually, and got three touchdowns. So, can't get a better record than that. But Charlie Meadows, nearly 4,000 yards, 3,900-ish. 37 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. That's a fairly decent year. It's okay. It's not fantastic. So, I'm in a bit of a predicament here. Do we draft another quarterback? Do we stick with Charlie Meadows and see where, where he ends up? I suppose that's something that we decide, depending on who's in free agency, and who we also find in the draft but he's looking he's looking okay i think he has normal development so maybe maybe quick actually but either way not fantastic um i think we'll, we'll trade andy dalton next year just to get him off the books he's a massive cap here i think around 20 mil so that getting rid of that definitely huge joe mixon with a very good year over a thousand yards averaging 4.2 a carry with a lot of touchdowns gia bernard only three touchdowns barely any yards Getting rid of him was definitely the right choice. Tyler Boyd, no 1,000-yard receivers this year, but Tyler Boyd and AJ Green both in the 900s, with Tyler Eifert around the 700 mark. Um, a lot of touchdowns, actually, from the receivers there, the, the top three guys. Got 11, 9, and 10. That is fantastic. The O-line performed a lot better, actually. I'm surprised Shaq Mason gave up the most sacks, but, you know, sometimes that just happens. Um... Not sure where our right guard is, actually. Oh, he's at the bottom. He didn't get any sacks. Jason McLeod with zero sacks as a rookie. That's fantastic. He's still only normal development, though. I thought he would have gone up. Um, if he's playing a whole season, giving up no sacks, you'd think he would go up at that point. Vontes Burfitt with 130 tackles. A lot of tackles for loss there from Miles Garrett and Vita Vea. Once again, sacks not very high. It seems like this playbook or this, this um, scheme we're running isn't generating a lot of pressure on the quarterback, but if they're trying to run it, they're not getting anywhere. Um, a lot of picks, actually. Amos with five, Denard with four, White, Javis White with three. Looks like he was a good pick up there. Only two forced fumbles. It seems like they've really cut down on the forced fumbles. Um, if we're getting a lot of tackles for loss, you'd expect us to have a few more forced fumbles in there. But anyway, no defensive touchdowns. Sort of see the yearly awards offensively once again in the 20s. Um, might change the scheme, might change the players, not sure yet. Might be a scheme thing, considering it's happened two years in a row. I'd probably lean more towards that. But, you know, we'll see. We might change it up next year. Maybe get another quarterback in and change it up at the same time, see if that solves the problem. Um, see if we have any awards here. I can't imagine we will. Charlie Meadows is actually number six in Offensive Player of the Year. So that that is pretty good. I don't think he had that good a season. Um, Vontes Burfitt with Defensive Player of the Year. That is very surprising. Um... 
I wouldn't say he had a fantastic season. Or oh, maybe maybe no defenders performed that well this year. He had 130 tackles. That's fairly good, but nothing more besides that. Charlie Meadows, offensive rookie of the year. Hopefully that gives him a bit of a boost. Fisher Holmes as well. Didn't actually uh, look at his stats. He didn't. Must couldn't have been that good then. Um, that's quite unfortunate. No one on the defensive rookie of the year list. And I think that'll be it for the, the awards we'll get this year. So we'll have a look at the team quickly before we jump into the first playoff game. Up to an 85 overall. Charlie Meadows only two skill points. While Tyler Boyd had three. Um, Fisher, Fisher Holmes had two as well. So Charlie Meadows being maybe in there. I think maybe the quality of our skill position players was carrying him a bit. Um, defensively, we do have a fair few points on a few players. Tredavis White, 93 overall, up to a superstar development. So the trade was definitely worth it. Um, not exactly sure how the star superstar quick development uh, process works. I think it's, it's nothing to do with awards, I don't think. I think it's how you rank compared to everyone else in, in the league. But if you're interested in... In finding more out about that um, I think I did read a post on reddit about it a while ago so I can look that up and do an explanation for you guys um, down in the comments or, or in a video actually if um, if that'd be more more interesting let me know let me know down in the comments how you'd feel about that Charlie Meadows 81 overall with confidence I mean he's okay his throwing's not fantastic his deep accuracy is pretty terrible at 76 um, I mean, we're 87 overall going into this playoff game. Tyler Boyd also, a little bit of a hidden gem. If you can trade for him, get him pretty cheap. He seems like he's definitely worth it. An 88 overall after two years. Um, he looks absolutely fantastic. Good at pretty much everything you want a receiver to be there. Very good route running as well. But we'll jump into the uh, the wildcard game against the Dolphins. Hopefully we can get a win. I mean, the Dolphins team aren't fantastic, so we should. Um, Vontes perfect down to quick development after getting defensive player of the year just seems ridiculous to me but anyway we'll jump into the playoff game and see where we go from there so first game against the dolphins here i think we should win i think we were a little bit higher overall than them i think they were about an 83 84 so i mean this should be a fairly comfortable win i mean we're a few overall points higher so we should be like a one or two possession win hopefully so we'll go through the game here Nil nil going the whole it's a really defensive battle in this one. Zero to zero at the end of the first quarter. Um we'll go through to the second to half time. Hopefully there's a little bit of scoring happening. So we're up ten to nothing. Our defence seems to be playing very well. We've kept them to three points in the first half. Can't complain about that considering they are eleven and five. Seventeen to three, looks like we're gonna dominate this game. I mean, we're up two possessions at the moment. They do have the ball, but they're they are really struggling to move it against our defense actually so we'll skip to the end of the game 17 to 6 20 to 6 20 to 13 and as i predicted a one possession win can't complain about that i mean we'll jump into the second playoff game hopefully we're against the team who's not much better than the dolphins um i i'd really like to make it to the super bowl for once in these rebuilds to be honest so jumping into the second game here we are against the Steelers so this is going to be a tough one I can't see us winning this one and it's not the best of starts we're down oh actually it's seven apiece now going into the second quarter can't complain there I mean I thought we were going to get absolutely dominated 14 to 7 and they're moving the ball at will against us 20 to 7 going into the second half not fantastic considering we are a defense first team doesn't look like I don't think we'll be able to pull this one back now. 26 to 7. We have been absolutely dominated by the Steelers here. Going into the fourth quarter. I mean, it'll take an absolutely miraculous comeback. Maybe Charlie Meadows can pull it off. 14 to 26. No, he can't. 36 to 14. I mean, we got absolutely dominated at the end there. Lost by over 20 points. Hopefully, well, moving into next year, we'll build the team up just that little bit more. Maybe a year or two it'll take us to get to a Super Bowl. Quite happy with where we're at now. But, you know, I'll see you in the offseason. So, free agency. There's a few good guys here. We've got Miles Jack. We've got Brandon Scherf. We're going to put an offer in for Miles Jack. We're going to really put a lot of money behind that. I mean, we're going to go Austin Eckler as well, actually. So we do need a backup. He is very good um, on the backup side of things. We're going to really lowball him. Hopefully get him in for, on quite a cheap deal, considering he's a good, good backup. We'll throw 60 points this way. Hopefully, you know, he'll accept that one. If not, we'll go for Matt Breeder or someone else uh, or another running back in there. Someone who doesn't have an offer, who's fairly decent. Maybe Kenyon Drake. 
he might be pretty good. Shaq Thompson. Oh, God, he wants a lot of money. I'm not going to go for him, actually. Um, but yeah, Miles Jack, he'll be the guy that I throw money at. We'll see if we can get him. Um, hopefully we can. You know, we'll see. So, Miles Jack rejected, even though we did offer the highest amount by a fair, fair you know, few points. Um, Brandon Scherf went really high. Look at that. Miles Jack got 130 points. So, into the draft. George Simmons. I don't know what our quarterback situation is, to be honest. We might, we're going to go with him. And this is the overall draft. It's an okay draft. It's not fantastic. It's a lot of guys who could potentially start in the coming years, but for now, they're not going to be fantastic. Uh, admittedly, I did let the CPU or the AI do the draft for me after, I think, the third round. This was actually a decent draft. There's quite a lot of 81s in there. Uh, a good, very good left end. We didn't need D-line. He was the guy I was going to go with, but we didn't need D-line. Um... Charlton Amy looks pretty good there. You know, the drafts, they seem to have, have lowered the potential in the drafts. I haven't seen a receiver, because there was a, while, a little while when receivers were... You could get around the mid-80s, maybe the high 80s when it came to receivers, because uh, they'd have A-plus in one of the routes, but I haven't seen that for a little while. I think they've, they've nerfed the drafts a little bit. So our team... Going into year three, does look good. We're an 87 overall. We've got a little bit of um, of age on our side there. We'll look, probably look to trade two of the quarterbacks. Not sure who yet. I think we're going to go with Simmons just because just Meadows didn't get it done and Dalton didn't get it done either. So we'll probably trade both of those guys. The D-line is looking absolutely fantastic. Vita Vea, I thought would be a higher overall than 83. Considering he still has star development, you'd expect him to go up a few overalls per year. So... Ruben Foster, I think we can get him in. Um, yep, both quarterbacks and Billings there. I mean, Billings was okay, but I mean, he's only a 77 overall, so I think I think he was the third option on our D-line. So getting in Ruben Foster, we did need a different linebacker, so we'll move Vontez over to the left outside linebacker slot, and that will really, really improve our linebacking core. I can see us going on, going on a decent playoff run this time. I mean, we went on a decent playoff run last year. Hopefully, once again, we can do that. I mean, the team is looking primed and ready to go. Hopefully, our new quarterback in Zimmons can take us there. Hopefully, he will perform better than Dalton and Meadows did. Um, I think the 49ers have about five quarterbacks on their roster now as well. So there might be someone, you know, we can... Uh, if he doesn't perform, we can just trade for someone there in the off season or something you know we'll see but the team is looking very good Tredavis White's looking fantastic Garrett's looking good let's jump to mid-season and see where we are with the team so mid-season mark we're four and three we're top of the division we're doing fairly decently we've got some big contracts to sign that we've got Miles Garrett who is going to be very expensive at 94 million Ruben Foster also going to be quite expensive we've got a lot of cap room though I think that's around 100 mil so we can get those guys in you know, we'll see. We'll see how much we have left after these guys. We, de we definitely have enough, actually, considering we've got a rookie quarterback. We've traded Andy Dalton. We got rid of him off the books. Um, Miles Garrett wants a hell of a lot of money, but he is worth it, considering he's 96. Still with superstar. Tre'Davious White with superstar. I mean, eight mil a year is a lot. We'll up the years there. We'll lower him just a little bit, down to around six per year. I mean, I'm not going to complain at that. That is a fantastic deal. For Tredavis White there. He is a very, very good cornerback. Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon's he's 87 overall. He's I really like him as a player. He's someone who I hoped the, the Lions would draft when they were doing, you know, you know, when when the draft was coming around. He had a few a few um personal issues, I think, why they didn't draft him, but I definitely would have taken him. Um Carl Lawson. Sort of someone I, I, I you never really think about who will go up in overall, but he seems to be performing very well considering he's only a normal development. He's up to an 87 speed rusher. Um, Stats-wise, he hasn't been doing very well, but overall-wise, he has been doing fairly decently. Um, Taylor Moten here. I mean, he is a starting left tackle, so he's going to want a little bit of money. He's decent at 82 overall. He'll probably stay around that mark. I mean, finding someone around that overall. I mean, he, he he's probably in the top 10 overall-wise, but... I can't see us getting a big improvement at a cheap price, so we'll keep him. And Vontez Perfect, last year's Defensive Player of the Year. Down to quick development. He's a scheme fit this time as a run stopper, playing his preferred position. We'll keep him there. And Jordan Willis, our final signing. 
Um, we'll try and get him back. I think I'm trying to lowball these guys a little bit too much. A lot of them want deals at the end of the year, so we'll see where that goes. So, we made the playoffs again. We're going against the Colts, though. And the Colts are actually surprisingly very good after a year or two. Well, not actually that surprisingly, if you consider their team is very young. They have a lot of good young players. They had a very good draft this year. They got Quinton Nelson, and they got... Uh, I can't remember the linebacker's name at the moment, but they got the linebacker who's leading the league in tackles when he's actually missed a game. So Darius Leonard, that's his name. He is going to be, he, he looks like he's fantastic. And in the game, he's probably around the 90 overall mark now. George Simmons looks okay. Joe Mixon with a fantastic year. 1,400 yards, nearly five yards a carry. 16 touchdowns as well. That is a phenomenal year. Um, he definitely worth the re-signing. But throwing wise... Not as good as you'd hope. Uh, three guys or four guys around the 700-yard mark. Not fantastic. I mean, hopefully that can be improved on next year. If we make it to next year, hopefully we can make it to the Super Bowl this year. But looking at the team, it doesn't quite look Super Super Bowl caliber ready. Um, a lot of tackles for loss by the looks of it. 11, well, not as many as previous years. We just changed the scheme to try and get more QB pressure. And with 14 sacks from Miles Garrett, 7.5 from Lawson. Looks like it worked. With a hell of a lot of picks there as well. well. That's a lot of picks on a lot of different players in the team. Should be a fair few forced fumbles with that many sacks. We've got two, tr two for Tredavis White. That is bizarre. And he recovered both. Didn't get anywhere with them, but he recovered them. No defensive touchdowns, but one safety from Miles Garrett in there. So defensively, I think we're probably up there with one of the best, if not the best in the league, looking at those sack numbers and everything. We're second best. That is... I mean, I'm very happy with the way the defence is going. The offence could just use that. I don't know what they're missing. They feel like they're missing something. Probably an elite quarterback. But, I mean, that's something you've got to sacrifice if you're going to build up the defence the way we have. Um, George Simmons and Joe Mixon coming in on the top offensive player list there. Defensive player of the year. No one in there for us, unfortunately. George Simmons does win rookie of the year. I mean, I'll take that. Hopefully he's got a bit more development than Meadows did have. Um... On Defensive Rookie of the Year, no one spectacular there. And I think that might be our only award, considering Joe Mixon didn't beat Levy on Bell. I can't imagine any of our other guys will be on the list. Maybe Miles Garrett on defensive line, but, I mean, he's going to be a 99 overall anyway. So we'll jump into the playoff game against the Colts. And this is, hopefully, you know, we can win this game. The Colts are a good team, though. Um, I think they were, well, I think actually they're only around 83 overall, and we're about 90, so we should win. It's a very close game. I mean... I would expect us to win this one. I'd be quite disappointed if we didn't because I want us to get into a Super Bowl at least once in this rebuild. Didn't happen in the Bears one. Hopefully it will happen this time. They seem to be moving the ball very easily against us. Our second ranked defence in the league. Wouldn't expect them to give up 17 points in a half. Hopefully we can claw it back just a little bit. 27 to 10. Can't see a comeback happening. That is very, very disappointing. Um, once again, I'll move this into a four-year Hopefully in the fourth year, you know, we can do that final push for a Super Bowl. We'll see where we end up. Uh, let's jump into it, I guess. So, final year. Let's sim to the playoffs. Hopefully, you know, we can get something. The team was looking okay. Um, Ruben Foster, something happened to him. I can't find him on the game anymore, even though I did tag him. I think maybe he retired or something. It's absolutely bizarre. And we didn't make playoffs. Again, bottom of the division. Um... We'll have to knock this one down as another failure, I'm afraid. If you guys know of any way to make it easier to get to the Super Bowls, do let me know. I think the teams we're building are pretty good. They just they just don't have... They're missing something, and I can't quite, quite work out what it is. But hopefully, you know, you guys have enjoyed the video. Um, quite, quite a bit of fun making this one. Quite a few unused players who I threw in, which I did quite enjoy. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. Comment down below a team you want me to do or things you would have done differently in this rebuild. Um, also, subscribe to the channel. I know I've just started releasing the 19 videos again. There should be a fair few more on the way, so hopefully you guys do enjoy that. Um, but for now, I think, yeah, I'm just going to sign out, leave you with the stats on the screen, and we'll see you for the next rebuild.